Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mr. Peter and I know here. And today I'm going to be doing my SummerSlam 2014 predictions. And today I decided I'm going to do more of a kind of discussion video and actually talk about the matches. But if you're not interested in what I have to say about the matches, um, I will post the ratings of each match and an overall and the overall rating in the description. So you can just check that out and exit off the video if you don't really want to hear my discussion. But um, if you do, then um, listen on and uh, let's get started. So the first match was um, on the pre-show, which I'm, I'm actually going to start reviewing the pre-show matches now as well. Just, um, so this match was um, Antonio Cesaro against Rob Van Dam. Um, this match was a bit slow to start off with, like the first couple of minutes were a bit slow, but um, you know this match really picked up towards middle and the end. Um, so yeah, there's some good spots like Cesaro hitting, you know, the uppercut out of nowhere, which, you know, is always a really good spot, and, you know, some nick close back and forth near balls, um, <coughs> although, however, I don't think Rob Van Dam should have gone over in the match, to be honest, because, um, I think, I feel like Cesaro needed some momentum, and kind of come back, and, you know, if these, you know, and they should try and push him, because I think he's one of those guys who can put on a good match, make you know, his opponent looked good, but also made himself look good. So I'd probably give this match about two and three quarter stars. So we kicked off the show with um, a match for the Intercontinental Championship. We saw The Miz defend against Dolph Ziggler. And, um, you know, I, I, this is, um, this match wasn't, you know, really long. It was under ten minutes. I think it was about seven or eight minutes. Um, this was a good match, you know. Um, but, you know, Miz and Ziggler have really good chemistry. Um, you know, some of Miz's, you know, best matches have been with Ziggler on Raws and stuff. So, yeah, these guys definitely have, you know, a great kind of... They're good at putting together matches. Um, you know, there were loads of back-and-forth spots. You had, um, you know, Ziggler um, go for the famous and then Miz counter the Skull Crusher finale. You had Ziggler kick out. And, um, you know, I don't think... Any, you know, when uh, Ziggler hit the zigzag and won, I don't think, really, I don't think anyone really saw that coming. Um, I think a lot of people saw Miz, you know, going to get the win, but no, this was a good match. Um, the surprise as well, the good, good surprise as well, and I thought, um, you know, this is a very good way to open the show, and so I'd probably give this about three and one quarter stars. After that, we saw the Divas Championship match, AJ defending against Paige. Um, this match was really short. It was under five minutes. But it was actually a really good match for the time that they were given. I mean, you know, you had some really good wrestling from these two. I mean, what would you expect? This was better than their match at Battleground, I thought, despite the lack of time. Um, you know, obviously you had AJ do the clothesline from the top rope to the outside, which was, you know, nice to see. Um, you know, there was some, you know, physicality as well on the outside. Paige doing a knee to AJ, um, like, when she was had a head out on the rope as well and then the finish was actually really good as well you had um, AJ put in the Black Widow and then Paige struggled to get out and then eventually countering it into um, a move called I think it's called the Rampage I'm not sure if that's the correct term but yeah this was a good match give it two and three quarter stars for that one then we had the flag match which confused me a bit because I thought it was going to be retrieve the flag from you know the pole from one of the ring posts you know and each flag was on either side but no this is actually just a normal match but the winner got to like have the national anthem and the flag waved so that was um surprising actually but um seemed more of a kind of thing you'd see in you know the 80s or something but um anyway um so jack swagger versus rusev um this was actually a surprisingly good match the match of battleground i didn't really like in, in my opinion, I think it was a bit um, boring and everything. But this match was actually very good. Um, with Rusev, it's interesting because he's not like a lot of the other monster, monster big men that they push. Because you know, he can actually move in the ring. He's can he hits like he's hit. Um, he can hit moves like spinning heel kick. Well, not heel kicks, but yeah, spinning heel kicks and stuff. And uh, these guys actually had a pretty good match. There's a lot of good ring psychology and stuff. You know good use of the submissions as well and the tension and stuff but no this was a good match um, 
even though it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. But yeah, he had Rusev win here. It made him look he looked strong, but also Swagger also didn't look looked of looked fairly strong as well by not tapping out. You know, he got passed out, and you know, but. I thought they were going to do the check the hand, but they just run the bell straight away, which is a bit weird. But no, this was a good match. I give it three stars. Now we go on to the match of the night, in my opinion. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins in a lumberjack match. This was really good. This is, like I said, match of the night. These two, uh, great chemistry together. Uh, apparently, at house shows, these guys have had really good matches as well and stuff. Um, you know, I thought maybe with the lumberjack match, they'd be quite limited. But they actually went all out here. There's some really nice spots, like, you know, Ambrose doing the crossbody from the top rope to all the lumberjacks and stuff. And, you know, it's cool how they managed to go into the crowd and stuff. And, you know, really just kind of go, make it, still make it into a brawl. But having said that, there was some good wrestling as well. You know, these guys, you know, are both just really good technically, especially Ambrose. Um, you know, I thought, I was, a bit cons I was a bit worried at first when all the lumberjacks came into the ring, so I thought maybe... They just stopped the match because I've seen lumberjack matches before where you know um, the like you know the lumberjacks start fighting amongst each other and then the, the bell rings because it's just gotten out of hand. But now this is um, this is fine. I thought they were gonna have Dean Ambrose go over here, you know, so then they can continue the feud and then have a match for the briefcase. But they didn't go that way. They had Rollins win by using the briefcase, which was was okay, I guess, but. I wouldn't have booked it that way if it was me, but, you know, I might just be biased because Dean Ambrose is one of my favourite guys at the moment. But um, this is a very good match. Um, I'd probably give it um, four stars. Four stars. Following that, it was the match between Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt where um, Rowan and Harper were banned from ringside. And, yeah, I think this is the right thing to do. Um, this is this is you know an, an, a, a solid match. I mean, I think these guys could have done better. It was better than their match at Battleground by quite a bit. I found that match to be quite disappointing. But no, this match was good. Um, you know, there was, there was some moments you know that were good. Um, I liked you know it was interesting how they managed to. They did pretty much this, a really similar ending to the Daniel Bryan match at Royal Rumble 2014, where they had the sister Abigail on onto the. Um, the barricade and then did it in the ring but you know this was good for Bray I think you know to give him back some momentum um, and I think this obviously um, Jericho isn't you know as big as he once was but this is a good win for him because I just feel it gives you know because after that feud with Cena he really lost momentum you know he looked weak in every match that he was in with Cena but here he looked pretty strong he did. He went toe to toe with Jericho, and this was yeah solid match. So I'd probably give this three and one quarter stars. We then had the match between Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella, which this match was a lot better than I expected. I mean, especially from Stephanie, she actually did really well for herself here. You know, she hadn't been in the ring for over ten years, but she really, you know, actually wrestled pretty well. Um, well, it was it was interesting how they gave Stephanie most of the offense, even though Brie is a current wrestler. Well, they both haven't wrestled in a while, obviously, but Brie's more fresher to, you know, wrestling and stuff. And I mean, Stephanie McMahon's selling was a bit off, but you know, this match was okay. It was fine, to be honest. A lot better than I expected. Um, the heel turn from Nikki Bella really surprised me, actually. I mean, probably a lot of people saw it coming, but I didn't see it coming, to be honest. I thought, and it was a good reaction as well from the heel turn. Well, this match is okay. I'd probably give it about two and a half stars. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns was next. Um, this match was about as good as I expected. I mean, Orton did well for himself. Usually with Randy Orton, he doesn't do well in matches where you know he's supposed to be the veteran, and you know, as in, in the sense that he's supposed to be dictating the like offense and supposed to be kind of leading. It and being a ring general, but I mean this was fine. You know, there was some good stuff in here. There's some nice spots. You know, like the the um, RKO in midair that was nice. Um, you know, it was this. You know, the crowd I thought were really behind Roman Reigns as well. Um, he looked pretty good here as well. 
I think this is the right thing to do, have Roman and Reigns going over here, because you, I, I, they have really have big plans for him in the future, and I think, you know, that, um, this win against Randy Orton will do, well, good, do, will be a good, you know, momentum push for him, and, um, who knows, maybe in the future, at some point, Roman Reigns will be contending for the title, but we'll see, um, in the future, but, um, this match was good, I'd probably give it, um, three and one quarter stars. And finally, we get on to the main event between John Cena and Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This match was very surprising. I mean, I don't think anyone saw, well, no, anyone expected to see what they saw in the sense that literally Lesnar dominated the whole match. Literally the whole match. The only offense Cena really got in was an attitude adjustment and an STF and, you know, Brock kicked out of the STF, obviously, and they kicked out of the attitude adjustment, sorry, and um, got out of the STF fairly quickly. So, yeah, this match was interesting, though, considering it was just a one-sided beatdown. This was actually surprisingly good. I mean, also, I was, you know, there were 16 German suplexes applied to John Cena, which was just insane. Like, it was just... John Cena's neck must have just been completely, you know battered off of that match, but um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this match for what it was, I mean, it was, it's hard to, you know, make a good match out of a one-sided beatdown, but I think they did a good job with it here, I'd probably give um, this match three and a half stars, I would say, yeah. So overall, this, this show was solid, I mean, there was no bad matches on here whatsoever, I mean, it wasn't necessarily, I mean, there was one really good match, but there was no, there was no real terrible matches on here, everything was, you know, decent to good, so um, overall I'd probably give the show a 7.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys, please like and subscribe, and uh, also let me know if you would like to, me to continue, like, you know, talking, you know, and giving my thoughts on the matches, or would you rather just me go back to the old review concept of just star ratings and stuff. So yeah, please like and subscribe guys, thanks for watching.